Gentlemen, your very own strong black woman. Here's Kathy Griffin. beautiful theater to be talking such shit about people. <laughs> oh well. All right. Let's just get right to the red carpet, shall we? Yeah. All right, so I got canned from the red carpet. Fired, 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 in no uncertain terms. Yes, that's right, I was fired. They fired Mrs. Kathy. And so, the deal is that I got fired, and I'm owning it. Okay, so when I got fired, I did what any D-lister would do. I immediately called the New York Post and gave them an exclusive. And <laughs> how did it get out? I don't know, I called uh, page six. Um, well, I have their number in my cell phone. All right, and I'm owning it because I think that everybody knows when you get fire fired, all right? So Star Jones also got canned, but of course she's not admitting it. And <laughs> she's such an ass, you guys. What I love is, I love that she got fired and she's acting like she chose to leave the red carpet because of her book tour and all that shit. but she just drives me crazy because she's so cranky all the time and I don't know why. Like, she's got the easiest job in show business, right? Because, you know, she's on The View. She's like chairman and CEO of the fucking Lucky Club. And... <laughs> So anyway, the E Channel hires Star to do the number one position on the red carpet, and then they call me in for a meeting, and they said, okay, we want you to be in the number two position, and we want you to, like, take a bite out of Hollywood and be funny and outrageous and sarcastic. So I was like, uh, done. All right. And, um, you know, so I did it, and I really had a lot of fun, and um, there was an incident. All right, hear me out, hear me out. Okay, so I thought it would be funny to try to ask just really silly questions and stuff like that, because I thought, well, I don't really want to do what Joan Rivers does, because that's her thing. She really put that whole red carpet thing on the map. I mean, nobody even knew those designers before she started talking about them and stuff. So I thought, well, that's Joan's thing. What if I did something silly? Like, you know, like on the British chat shows when they ask really dumb questions? So, like, I asked Clive Owen if he had any weed. Um, <laughs> That's funny, right? I asked Kanye West what his favorite dish at the Olive Garden was. Just like, <laughs> dumb questions, right? Okay, so then I thought it would be fun to come up with like a running joke that I could do with everybody, right? And I love it when celebrities sort of show their true stupid dumbass colors. Like, you'll just see celebrities at, you know, all the entertainment shows and looking in the camera. And my, one of my favorite things is when they give messages of hope. So you'll see some like dumbass at some movie premiere, just look in the camera on Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood or something, and they'll be like, I want to give a message of hope to the troops. Good luck to all of you out there in the Republic of Chad. Like, they don't even know where the war is, right? They can't find Iraq on a map, like none of that shit, right? So one of my favorite examples of celebrities giving messages of hope was when Ben Affleck went to rehab. Because I thought that was, first of all, Ben Affleck went to total fakey celebrity rehab. Because, no, because first of all, he had like a bad bender in Vegas and then went to rehab. And he went to this place, Promises in Malibu, which is total fake bull celebrity rehab. Oh yeah, oh yeah, it's really fancy. It's like the Four Seasons and every room has a private plunge pool and shit. And all the celebrities go there who don't really want to get better. Like, Andy Dick goes there, and, you know. Robert Downey Jr. goes there. Mary-Kate, right? You know, like, the, like, the 
not so serious about really rehabilitating, right? So anyway, he goes there, and all these celebrities were giving him messages of hope on all the shows. And one after another, they'd look in the camera, and they'd be so earnest, and they would say, Ben, you are so brave. Thank you, Ben, for your bravery. This is the bravest thing I've ever seen. Ben, you're the bravest person I've ever known. Good for you, Ben. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. We've lost over 2,000 of our own in Iraq, but Ben Affleck going to rehab is the bravest thing you've ever heard of. Brave, 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 brave. Okay, so I thought it would be funny to, to make up a rumor about a celebrity going to rehab and have other celebrity give that person bogus messages of hope. All right, so I thought, okay, who's the least likely person to ever go to rehab, right? So I thought, well, I can't, I can't say, oh, um, have you heard Lindsay Lohan went to rehab? Because, you know, TikTok. And, um, <laughs> no, I, I know Lindsay has lost a lot of weight recently, and it's because of diet and Pilates uh, and crack. Um, you know. Not with really the diet or Pilates, but anyway. And so I thought, well, I can't say Lindsay Lohan went to rehab because that's too, you know, likely, right? So then I thought, well, I can't say, um, oh, Nicole Richie went to rehab because I'm sure she's got a room already booked over at Promises <laughs> with a nice marble barfatorium waiting for her. So I was like, all right, who's the least likely person? What's the name of that little kid missing her tooth from I Am Sam? Dakota Fanning. <laughs> It's funny, Dakota Fanning in rehab, right? With the no tooth and the big blue eyes and the blonde hair, right? Walking into promises, stop me before I stop myself. Like, come on. That's funny. So, so anyway, and by the way, I want you to know I did it in rehearsal and no one from E stopped me or anything. Okay, so I'm live on the red carpet and one celebrity after another is coming up to me and I would say, um, I don't know if you heard, but... Little Dakota Fanning was admitted to rehab this morning for <laughs> drug and alcohol abuse. Do you have a message of hope? And one celebrity after another knew I was kidding. It was really, really funny. And Sean Hayes from Will and Grace was the best. He goes like this, good luck, Dakota. You don't want to go south. South Dakota! <laughs> It was the funniest thing in the world. I was so proud of myself. Um, until the next day, when the lawyers started calling, I get a call, and one of my attorneys is like, well, you know, um, the E! Channel is very upset with you, and they got a call from DreamWorks, right, the studio that did War of the Worlds, and they're furious with you, and they think that this rumor is going to affect their opening box office ticket sales or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. And at DreamWorks, they want you to know you're on a list. That's right, you're on a list. And I'm like, yeah, the sh list. I live there. <laughs> Big deal, I'm on a list. And Steven Spielberg is personally furious with you. Steven Spielberg personally furious with me. And I love that. I'm like, what? I, <laughs> I won't be able to star in any more Steven Spielberg movies? <laughs> What'll I do with my days? Suck my d right? And the E-Channel says, okay, we really need you to issue an apology. And I said, okay, here's my apology. You'd have to be a idiot to not know I was kidding. <laughs> and they go, we can't print that. I go, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got. So, no, that is, re I'm not apologizing for a joke. That's ridiculous. But what I love is that Steven Spielberg is taking even one second to worry about my ridiculous fanning joke as if he doesn't have bigger fish to fry with his star Tom Cruise freaking the f*** out on Oprah and the Today Show and everywhere else. And by the way, how much fun is the Tom Cruise meltdown? It's so delightful. Okay, here's my favorite thing about it. What I think is so funny about the Tom Cruise meltdown, besides the fact that he's against drug use of any kind, meaning prescriptions or antidepressants or anything, and yet he looks like a junkie, right? Like he's got the big circles and he's all shiny and greasy and shit. So, 
But one of my favorite things about the Tom Cruise meltdown is that he's so crazy, the gays don't want him anymore. how the gays just don't even want him anymore. They don't care. It's all about Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal. They all want Gyllenhaal. Yes. 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 They all want Gyllenhaal because of the Bareback Mountain. And I also love how the gay guys only want hot guys to be gay, right? They want Gyllenhaal. They want Ledger. They want Colin Farrell. Here's what you'll never hear from one of the gays. Oh, girl, don't be naive. Don't tell me you don't know about Miss Jean Hackman. Ooh. So, I'm calling the special strong black woman because number one, it makes no sense. But, <laughs> but also, I want to tell you what turned me into a strong black woman. Let me tell you something. The coverage of Hurricane Katrina turned me black. That's right, I'm black now. Now, I'm not, I'm not as black as Kevin Federline. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. That's a black man. I'm watching the Katrina coverage, round the clock, right, on CNN, with that yummy Anderson Cooper, meow. I know. Everybody wants him, the gays want him, the women want him. Here's what I love, I love that Anderson Cooper covered Katrina in Prada, right? He's like, I'm up to my knees in human feces in Prada. All right. Okay, so anyway, Katrina happens, and the weekend after Katrina, I actually had tickets to go see Kelly Clarkson in Vegas with the gays. And so, I love her. I love her. Okay, so Matt and I were supposed to go. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you guys heard, but Matt and I are getting divorced. It sucks, you guys. But hold on, hold on, hear me out. I, I know, it's horrible. But right now, we are totally reconciled, so keep your fingers crossed. Wish me luck. You're, you're actually nervous that I'm making fun of Oprah. <laughs> but Oprah for one second. Because that reminded me. How great is it that Oprah is totally putting the pounds back on? I love it! I love it! No, here's why. Because she was so f***ing superior when she took it off, right? Right? She had it all figured out. I get it, people! John Travolta! And he wasn't even on the show that day, but... And she got really tiny for a week there. Remember, like, she's wearing, like, the Marc Jacobs little dresses and stuff? You're, you're actually nervous that I'm making fun of Oprah. Because you know my joke is that I love her, but she thinks she's Jesus? And when she gets a paper cut, she's like, oh, stigmata? No, Oprah, it's not stigmata. Yes, it, no, it's a paper cut. No, but I, no, Oprah. Get off the cross and do your show. Gail. All right, so. No, I, I can't help it. I love that she put the weight back on because that's what I love about Oprah. She is my neighbor, my sister, my cousin, my friend. I love that she struggles with weight. We all do, right? But what I feel like now is so funny is she's, of course she doesn't want to own up that she's gaining it back, but she's totally back to like the high turtleneck dresses with the long sleeves, long dress, little pointy boots sticking out. I can't help it. Every pound she gains back for me is like a hug from Jesus. <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, so I had to tell, I had to tell um, my mom and dad that Matt and I are getting divor a divorce because I just, they read it in People Magazine because I just, I was like acting like it wasn't happening. But anyway, um, they're like, oh, we read in People Magazine. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right, I'm getting divorced. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I had to tell them, and you know, it's so comforting to know that at a time like this, a girl can count on family. Okay, this is my mom, right? <sighs> oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, Christ, hanging off the cross. You're never going to find another man, Kathleen. <laughs> I go, Mom! And then she goes, not this stage of the game. So... But you can't blame her. That was the box of wine talking. That was, oh yes, my parents love a box of wine. Your father likes the box because it has a spigot. <laughs> All right, so, I know. 
and so, oh yeah, and so, the, and then she tells her I'm not getting any younger, which I'm like, okay, I know. So then my Aunt Susan comes over one night because she's going to comfort me as well, right? So she brings over a bottle of wine, and as the wine is going down, my life sucks more, right? <laughs> so she's like, oh, Kat, this year is going to suck for you. I go, Sue, it's not going to suck. I'm going to get through this. And she's like, okay, but you know, the clock is ticking. I go, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm not getting any younger. And then she says, Willie, your vagina starts to sag. <laughs> I said, what? I go, my vagina is gonna sag? And then she goes, oh yeah, a few more years is gonna be between your knees. You guys, I have been checking my vagina every four hours. I have a tape measure. If it falls out, I pick it right back up the street. And you know, I'm not afraid of plastic surgery. I'll get that rejuvenated so fast. I'm gonna have the of a nine-year-old. I'm gonna be so hot, I'm gonna myself. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, the weekend after Katrina, um, Matt and I had tickets to go see Kelly Clarkson in Vegas with the gays. That's weird that I'm getting divorced. Every straight guy's dream. All right, so, no, I think he did like some of the Cher show and the Bette Midler show. All right, so anyway, I came up with this idea because Matt couldn't go to Vegas with me to see Kelly anymore. And I came up with this idea, and I know it might sound a little pompous, but hear me out. I thought, what if I auctioned off? A, like an evening with myself to go see Kelly in Vegas, go to the concert, go backstage afterwards, meet her, get a picture with her, which I didn't technically clear with Kelly. Um, I was like, oh, she'll do it. And, and then go to dinner with the gays, right? All right, so I put it on eBay, and honestly, I thought, you know, if I get like 500 bucks for this, I'll be happy. It ended up going for $6,900. So that's good, right? Yes, I'm a getter. All right, so... The money went right to the Red Cross. No, like, middleman, just right to the Red Cross. Okay, so anyway, I'm all excited, and the guy who won the auction was this guy named Mike who lives in D.C., and the night before, I was doing a one-nighter in Savannah. So one of the gays calls me to gay panic, and he says, <laughs> you know how they are, and he says, he says, you're not gonna believe this, Kelly has bronchitis, she canceled. I know, so I know, exactly. So I'm thinking, okay, what are we gonna do? So I called the auction winner. I said, what do you wanna do? And he was so sweet. He said, look, I'm just looking forward to hanging out. Don't even worry about the concert. I said, Mike, give me 24 hours. I'm gonna get you something great, I promise. So then the gays and I whipped ourselves up to, into a gay storm. <laughs> and, and so then I started, and I'm in Savannah. I started getting calls. So one of the gays calls and he says, I have one word, Manilo. And... <laughs> You know, which is great, which is great, don't get me wrong. But I was like, I get it, but it's not quite Kelly. But I get it, I see where you're going. This guy was gonna go see Kelly Clarkson, who's so hot right now, get a picture with her that he would have the rest of his life. I go, I feel like I gotta really deliver somebody like at that level, somebody really amazing like that. I had to eat <laughs> and call Celine. <laughs> oh yes, Celine Dion. Married to René Angelil, <laughs> who is gambling away her millions right now. All right, so, so anyway, now, you know, I don't really know her, right? Like, I've met her a couple of times, but believe me, she's not my cell phone or anything. And so I made a bunch of calls, and I found out that Mark Steinus from Entertainment Tonight was going to Vegas at that moment to interview Celine and Rene, and he was going to interview them watching the telethon because Celine had, like, freaked out on Larry King, right? So I called Mark Steinus, and I said, Steinus, this is Kathy Griffin. I know this is a really weird message, but do you think there's any way you could get me two tickets to Celine tomorrow night and a meet and greet with her? And I went on about the auction, and 6,900 bucks and Red Cross. Oh, and then I go, it's for the children, because that's my new thing. <laughs> no matter what, it's for the children. It's all about the children. All right, so anyway, he gets off the plane and he goes, okay, what's the game plan? And I said, well, first of all, distance yourself from me as much as possible. <laughs> no, because I don't know, maybe Celine has heard some of the things I've said about her on television. <laughs> you know, just, just funny jokes, really. Um, just things like that when she wears her white leather jumpsuit, she gets a yeast infection. Just funny. 
Or maybe she's heard me say in jest that her husband, Rene Angelil, has been raping her since she was 13. <laughs> oh, just dinner conversation, really. Observational humor. All right, so, you know, and so he's like, well, what should I say? And I go, just say it's Kathy Lee Gifford. And so, um, and I'm doing a new Christian album, whatever. Okay, so he said, well, should I say that the auction was originally for her and not Kelly? And I said, no. I go, first of all, honesty is the best policy. Secondly, they could just catch me by going on eBay and seeing it, right? Just say that, you know, um, I've, Kelly was only in town for one night, and that's why I chose that show. And besides, I've already seen the Celine show twice. It, let me just say this. <laughs> if you have not seen the Celine Dion Vegas show tomorrow, get a plane ticket, <laughs> go to Vegas. It is the biggest freak show you will ever see, ever. You know it's Cirque du Soleil. Oh yeah, it's half Cirque du Soleil, half Celine Dion. For no reason, no reason at all. And let me just say this, and I know that she stands alone. I'm the only person who feels this way. I can't stand Cirque du Soleil. I'm sorry, I can't stand it. Here's why. I don't want to see a French-Canadian clown slowly roll a beach ball across the stage for five minutes while saying, ay, ay, ay. What is that? Is that French? Is that a joke? Ay, ay, ay. What the f***? Shut the f***. What is that? Shut up with your big shoes. I don't know what that means. And all right, I guess the contortionists are cool, right? Very impressive. They're doing stuff we can't do. But for me, once you see the gay guy bend over and blow himself, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> all right, so it's half Cirque du Soleil, half Celine Dion for no reason. And I heard her on Oprah say that she just went to Cirque du Soleil one night, and then I turned to Renee, and I say, Renee, someday I am to make a show like that. <laughs> a show that is half magic, half music. And she did, right? And I'm thinking, Renee, sometimes you have to say no. So, no, because it makes no sense. Like, she'll be standing there singing Titanic, right? And it's beautiful and wonderful. And for no reason, a giant styrofoam piano floats by over her head with a French-Canadian clown playing it on a harness like this. She doesn't look up, and he doesn't look down. It makes no sense. <laughs> oh, and then she does this other thing. And like I said, I've seen the show several times. Every single time she walks out at the beginning of the show, and it's at this huge theater in Caesars, right? Like 3,000 seats or something. It's sold out every night. Every time she walks out, she acts like she's shocked anyone showed up. <laughs> every night, it's like this. day at about three o'clock she's like you know Renee maybe tonight is the night they do not come <laughs> oh all right here's the other thing I, <laughs> I promise I have other topics I'm just excited okay so okay the other thing I love the banter in a big tour like if you saw the Streisand tour she did not change one syllable no matter what happened like sets could be falling down she never changed a thing city to city never change okay so Celine says this one thing and I've seen it every time and it, it just gets me I don't know if, if you'll think this is funny but it gets me every time she comes out and she goes like this is it okay if I come and sit with you for a moment. And everybody goes, hey, including me. I'm like, ah, oh, yes, come sit with us. Okay, so, because I love her. Okay, so she goes and she sits down on the front of the stage and she goes like this. This next song is for all the parents in the audience and also the children. <laughs> That's just everybody, right? She says, oh no, one of your stories. I don't know if I want to hear one of your stories. <laughs> All right. So anyway, 
Anyway, <laughs> sure enough, I'm in Savannah, the middle of the night, I get a call from a woman at the Celine Dion show. She says, yes, you can have two tickets to tomorrow night, and Celine will meet you in the auction winner for a picture. So I'm over the moon. All right, the next day I fly to Vegas. I have lunch with the gays. I said, that's it. I scored two tickets. I'm in. All the boys are there. And then my gay Steve gives me the gay sigh. <gasps> I go, what? And he goes, I love her. I go, I know you love her. You're gay, she's Celine Dion. And then he goes, well, can I have a ticket too? I go, oh, I'm so not pushing it. And then I said, but they did say like I could have her sign something. Okay, so Steve and his boyfriend Kyle go to the Le Shop du Celine. Oh yeah, there's a whole Celine store at Caesars, an entire store of just Celine crap, right? So it's like the CDs and the calendars and the posters, Celine t-shirt, Celine trucker cap, everything Celine. So, they come back to my hotel room with this heaping shopping bag of crap for her to sign, right? So I'm like, Steve, and he goes, huh? I'm like, okay, don't give me the sign. Fine, I'll do it. All right, so then Mike and I go to Caesars and we go backstage, it's time for the meet and greet. And let me just say this, I've been in many, many theaters. Some are beautiful like this one, some are holes. I have never seen anything as fancy as backstage at the Celine Dion Theater. The waiting room, right where you wait for her, is like cover of Architectural Digest. It was so fancy, I started to sweat. So, okay, so then I decide I want to really have everything in order for when she arrives. So I take everything out of the shopping bag, one thing after another, and I line it all up on the table next to her couch. So we're waiting for her to come in. The show starts at 8.30. She comes in at 8.27. Yeah, she's not wasting time on me, right? So I'm really nervous, and I just go like this, oh, Celine! So she puts her hand out, and she goes like this, hello, how are you? Kind of cold, right? So I just panic and I throw my arms around her, like we're old friends. And then I start talking really fast because I'm a wreck and I'm going, um, this is Mike and he's the auction winner and, um, you know, it, it goes for uh, the Red Cross and $6,900, Celine, and it's for the children. And also it's important that you, and I go, well, you probably know the whole backstory. And then she says, oh no, one of your stories. I don't know if I want to hear one of your stories. <laughs> Okay, so at that moment, I just turned into my mother and act like it didn't happen. <laughs> I was just kept talking like everything was great, and she was absolutely lovely. So she sits down, and she signs this big, beautiful program for Mike, and she gives it to him. And then I look over, and I see all the crap from Steve and Kyle. <laughs> on and on and on, right? So I'm thinking, okay, this is way too much. So I hand her a CD, and then while she's signing it, I just shove everything behind my back, back into the shopping bag, and she catches me. So she turns around and she goes, you have more you want me to sign? And I was like, oh, um, it's just, it's Steve and he you know the gays, it's really a lot. Oh, and I didn't tell you this, Kyle put post-its on everything of what he wanted her to write. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because it wasn't enough that she would just write Celine. Oh no, every item had like, dear Kyle, I love you because you loved me, Celine Dion. <laughs> Dear Kyle, our hearts will go on, Celine Dion. <laughs> so I know, so I'm just like, oh, it's, it's really too much. And then she says, that is okay, that is what I'm here for. So I hand her one thing after another, and one of the post-its said, because um, Kyle's a teacher, and it said, keep on teaching. It says something like, dear Kyle, keep on teaching. So then she goes, is he a music teacher? And I said, uh-huh, he's a history teacher. Um, <laughs> So I have to tell you, she sat there and signed every single thing I had. She was so lovely and so sweet. And so, so sweet. Okay, so she signs everything and she goes, okay, now we take the picture. So then we stand up and so she stands there and she's gorgeous, right? She's like six feet tall. She's got the long extensions, red corset dress, right? So we're now we're posing for the picture. So I'm over here, she's in the middle, and then Mike the auction winner is over here. And now there's three cameras. So there's Mike's Instamatic, which is fine, her professional camera, and then Steve's camera that he threw in the shopping bag because he had to have his own picture. So, so we're posing, right? And we're smiling, and we're posing, and over here, and over here. You guys, I don't have an explanation for what happened next. I can just say that I'm a big dork and I was nervous and I don't know why. I realized about halfway through the posing, I was petting her hair. <laughs> Petting her hair, 
And finally I go, I'm petting your hair. <laughs> That's really weird, right? And then my hand to God without missing a beat, she goes, whoop, whoop, that I will bark like dog for you. Whoop, whoop. Story. You got it in you? Okay. All right. So part of being a strong black woman is I have to see what things I can do on my own, right? So I had a one-nighter in Palm Springs, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to go by myself, and I can make this a fun weekend. Because, you know, I, I'm used to Matt coming with me, and I thought, you know, i got to see if I can do this by myself. I'll survive, right? So I thought, I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to go to Palm Springs. I'm going to get a sweet in my favorite hotel, the Parker, right? And you know what, I'm even gonna book it for the next night so I can have like a ladies relaxing weekend, right? Have a night where I put on the bathrobe and order room service, the whole thing. All right, so I load up the car and then I decided to bring the dogs. I'm even gonna bring the dogs because they take dogs there. So I thought, you know what, I can do this. So I load up the car with all the dog stuff. And by me, I mean Matt loaded up the car. And uh, <laughs> so I got the dog crates and the dog beds and the dog bowls and all this stuff. So now I drive to Palm Springs on a Friday. And one thing that drives me crazy is when people lie about the length of a commute, right? Like people are like, oh, I can get from LA to Palm Springs in 17 minutes door to door. <laughs> no, not yet, that's a lie. So I have a show that Friday night, it's Friday afternoon, I'm in traffic for four hours, right? I'm just bumper to bumper on the 10. So I have two dogs, Pom Pom and Chance. Here's the personalities. Okay, so Chance is like a really good dog, all right? He's a real watchdog, he's faithful, he'd rip your throat out if you came near me, he's just a really good dog, right? Pom Pom is like my 13-year-old bratty daughter, all right? So Pom Pom's inner monologue is, when I'm 18, I am so out of here. Um, <laughs> And she's just a rebel, and it's just always been that way, but they're in love. Okay, so I'm driving, and I'm going to Palm Springs. It's taking forever. The windows are down. I'm on the 10, and then at one point, I turn around, and I see Pom Pom jumping out of the car onto the freeway. Right? I know. So I'm like, Lala, Pom Pom! And I'm grabbing her tail, and she's like, F you! I'm like, Pom Pom, get back here! F you! Pom Pom! Pull her back in the car, and the whole time, Chance is like, I'm in so much trouble. No, you're not, Chance! Pom Pom! So then she curls up right away on the back seat, and she's like, is that all you got, bitch? I'm like, <laughs> and I'm pushing all the windows, right? <laughs> okay, that was such a red flag. If I had known then, I would have just turned right around. Okay, so finally get to Palm Springs, get to the hotel, driving up. I've been on the road for hours, and then the manager of the hotel comes down to greet me, which is sweet, right? But I'm still, like, all shaken. So I open the doors, I let the dogs out. First thing they do, take a giant crap on the driveway. <laughs> Both of them, and they're all proud of themselves. They're like this. <laughs> Los perros es no bueno. And I'm all, no, no, um, Paquito caca, Paquito. in and I really have this beautiful suite so it's got a living room and a separate bedroom and a big outdoor concrete patio right so I can leave the dogs out there so it's time to get ready for the show throw the dogs in the patio go do the show afterwards I go to Cheesecake Factory with the gays come on deep fried mac and cheese come on all right so but the whole time I'm thinking oh I really should get back to the hotel I'm really really worried about the dogs because my biggest fear is that one of them will take a crap on the carpet right and so I go back and the dogs are completely fine right and they're in the patio but they haven't like peed or done their business or anything right so then I open the front door and they both take off they just go like bats out of hell and the way this hotel is arranged is it's a big square with a courtyard and a restaurant in the middle so they're just gone and I just see Chance's blonde tail disappear into the bushes and then Pom Pom finds these people having Taco Bell and she just go and eats all their food I know so the whole time I'm like get back here you're embarrassing mommy come back right now and they're just having the time of their lives right they're like chasing bunny rabbits and romping and jumping through the sprinklers everything but coming back to me right so they finally finally come back and I'm like get in there all right so now it's time to go to bed so I get into bed and Pom Pom just curls up goes to sleep but Chance being a watchdog is walking around the bed like this so I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's a new environment, maybe it's because Matt isn't here. So I'm like, Chance, go to sleep. 
So then I think, oh God, what if he has to go to the bathroom? Right? My biggest fear. So I was like, everybody up, right? So I opened the front door and there's this grassy area right there, right? Okay, go potty, go potty, boom, they're gone. They're gone, they're running around doing everything but peeing and pooping. Although, how do I know? Because then they're just missing for like 20 minutes. So they finally come back and I'm like, get in there. All right, so, so Pom Pom goes right to sleep and then Chance is doing it again. I said, that's it, Chancey, you've got to sleep right now. So then I thought, well, maybe he's claustrophobic. So I opened the door between the living room and the bedroom. So now he's got the whole freaking place to wander around and whine, all right? So finally, we all go to sleep. A few hours later, I wake up to the smell. <laughs> you guys, he didn't just crap in the room. It was like diarrhea, spraying, puddles the size of a Loch Ness monster footprint all over. And this, and this is a Jonathan Adler design suite. He's pooped on the fur throw rug. It's gone through the fur, through the Berber carpet to the floor. All over, right? Okay, so I immediately call housekeeping and I'm like, there's been an accident. And then... <laughs> and... Uh, so they don't, housekeeping doesn't show up for an hour, right? And it reeks. So then I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm gonna get kicked out of the hotel. They're gonna charge me $20,000 to redo the room. Maybe I can clean it myself. So I go in the bathroom and I get every towel, every shampoo, every soap, and I just get on my hands and knees and I start scrubbing, right? I got crap underneath my fingernails. <laughs> Nothing's better, right? Nothing is better. So then finally, the housekeeping guy shows up and he's like this, oh no. <laughs> Los perros es no bueno. And I'm all, no, no, I'm Paquito Caca. Paquito. <laughs> so, basically he says he doesn't even have anything that can clean it, right? So I'm saying, please, please try to fix this, try to figure it out. So he's like, okay, I'll be right back. So now I'm thinking, okay, take the dogs out every two seconds. You don't want them to crap on the floor anymore, right? So I'm all sweaty, I got the t-shirt, I got my sweatpants, I decided to take them out, I got them on the leashes this time, right? And I'm walking them around, I'm like, you better go poo right now, you better go poo right now, if you're gonna spray diarrhea, do it in the god grass! And so, I take the dogs back to the suite. You guys, I don't know what they did. It was cleaner than when I found it. It was like a miracle, I don't know what they did. Okay, so then, next day Sunday, time to check out. So I get up about noon, I had to set the alarm. So um, I get up at noon, and uh, first thing I think is take the dogs out, right? Now here's the thing, I just sleep in a t-shirt. I know that's pretty sexy. Um, yeah, and it's always like some old t-shirt from like some morning zoo radio show I did. You know, wake up with eggy and poo poo or whatever. And so, and so it's got like holes in it and stuff. All right, but I'm thinking, take the dogs out, take the dogs out, right? So I open the front door, and once again, there's this little area right there. No, they take off, run as fast as they can, only this time, it's at the height of Sunday brunch, right? So the place is packed, and I'm like at the door like this, and I'm like, come back, doggies, come on! Chitty, pop on, come on! And then I hear the door click behind me. So I'm standing in the courtyard, yelling for my dogs, which are not even there, with no pants on. It's like this, I'll show you. And then he says, oh, our computers are down. I said, I'm not wearing pants and the lesbians are waiting. So I'm standing in the courtyard with no pants on. It's like this, I'll show you. cellulite, okay? You know what these thighs say? They say I take a bite out of life. <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm like this, yelling for the dogs, and of course they're not coming, and then 
Take a good hard look. Go ahead. <laughs> I know, it's disturbing. It's disturbing. Anyway, <laughs> stand there like this, and then who comes along to save the day? See if you can hear the choir of angels. A couple of tool belt wearing, golf loving, dinosaur weekend lesbians. <laughs> heaven because let me tell you something the lesbians know their dogs all right don't f with the lesbians at the dog park they run that dog park right oh yeah a lesbian can cock your tub and train your dog in 20 minutes like angels okay so of course my dogs appear out of the blue gravitate toward the lesbians and are all so then they're like, you need some help? And so... <laughs> and so... I said, yeah, um, first of all, I'm, I know I'm not wearing pants. And secondly, I go, um, would you mind terribly watching the dogs? I'm locked out of my room, I have to get a key. Sure, no problem, these dogs seem really cool. All right, so now... Now I have to walk the gauntlet through the courtyard, through the restaurant, to the front desk. So it's like this. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> I get to the front desk. I'm third in line. is like telling people his favorite Thai restaurant in Palm Springs. This one taxi driver he knows that's adorable, right? Finally, it's my turn, and I'm like, um, I um, need a key, I am not wearing pants, and, and then he says, oh, our computers are down. I said, I'm not wearing pants and the lesbians are waiting. <laughs> He gives me like a master key and I have to walk the gauntlet and go all the way back. But now it's been 15 minutes and I'm more crazed. So finally on the way back, I'm like this. I'm coming! <laughs> Open the door. You're not going to get that from Carrot Top. <laughs> All right, so, so then, then, like, everything was fine. I finally got home okay. But it just, I'm just saying, like, it's not supposed to be like that. When you call your damn dogs, they're supposed to come. When you call your damn dogs, it's supposed to be like this. Chance, pop-pop!